Amen. So I just thank God for his goodness and his love and the outpour of his spirit. I thank God because I am saved. Sanctified and filled with the spirit of God and asking God to continue his work in me. Amen. And so I'm glad to see all of you all that's here today. Our visitors, thank you for showing up. There's several of us out that's out. And so we just thank God that we're here. to share with you from the word of the Lord. Y'all ready for the word? Yes. I'm ready for the word of the Lord. We're going to go to the book of Romans chapter 6 and uh, we're, going to, we're going to read but before before we get into the word I got a, a question I want to ask you because I want you to be able to follow with me and so I want you, I want you to catch this. How many of you through the course of your life you had a friend, you had someone that you was close to, and, you know, talked and shared and poured your heart out to each other and just, and then all of a sudden that relationship turned cold. You know, it, it just, something happened, you don't know, they, you, you try to call them and they say, oh, I'm busy, you know, I, I'll catch you later, or you run into them, how you doing? Oh, fine, and you know, it's just, it just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't connect like it used to. And so you go to that person and say, you know, do you have anything against me? Anybody been there? You, you, you been there? You been there? Hey, you, you have anything against me? Can I do something? Yeah, yeah. Can I do something? What's my uh, So I, I want to talk to you. And I'm just really going to take, take my time here a little bit this morning. But I just want to talk to you and ask you this question. What does God have against you? Oh, wow. Oh, God. What does God have against you? Now, now, most of us have not asked God that question. You know, God, do you have anything against me? We say, yeah, Lord, the, the Lord loved me, the Lord loved me, and, you know, and, and, you know. But we have to stop and think about, am I doing all what God has called me as a believer to do? Have I been obedient? Now, hear the word of the Lord. Let's, let's go. Let's go to Romans chapter 6, verses 16, 17, 18, and 19. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. So it says this, surely you know that you become the slaves of whatever you give yourselves to. Anything or anyone who follow you will be your master. You can follow sin or you can obey God. Following sin brings spiritual death, but obeying God makes you right with him. In the past, you were slaves to sin. Sin controlled you. But thank God, you fully obeyed what you were taught. You are made free from sin, and now you are a slave to what is right. I use this example from everyday life because you need help in understanding some spiritual truths. In the past, you offered the parts of your body to be slaves to your immoral and sinful thoughts. The result was that you live only for sin. In the same way, you must, not, you must now offer yourself to be slaves to what is right. Then you will have only, then you will live only for God. As a young man that I've known for quite a few years and uh, in our relationship, he calls me Uncle Mel, but he was avid into football, loved football, played football in high school, played football in college, you know, and tried to make some attempts to, to go pro. And the Lord got a hold of his life and saved him. And he said, you know what, Uncle Mel? He says, as much as I committed myself to football, I'm going to commit myself to serving God. He said, I'm going to serve God wholeheartedly, all the time, you don't have to worry about me turning back, going back, anything. He said, as much as I submitted myself, as much as I gave my effort into football, I'm giving all my all to serving God. Matthew 10, 6 and 24 says this, no one can serve two masters. For you will hate the one and love the other. You will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. It's Matthew 6 and 24. God is asking us, y'all, this question. What spirit do you obey the most? Amen. Is it the spirit 
of the enemy or is it the spirit of God? Would you be able to answer God truthfully? Okay. Would you be able to say, yes, Lord, I've obeyed your every command and I've given my all for the sake of the gospel? Or would you say, Lord, there have been times and moments in my life huh, that I've neglected you and took matters in my own hands. Come on, y'all. Wow. Truth of consequences today here. All right, come on. All right. It, look, look, look. Or, or you would say, I have ignored the scriptures that said in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways, do what? Acknowledge, Acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. See, we. We, we have the scripture, we have the word in us. But there come moments where we feel like self got to intervene and take over. So then I ask the question, what does God have against you? You see, God has called us, y'all, into obedience with him. And when we neglect to be in obedience to him and to his word, then look, judgment lies at the door. Yeah, since, yeah, since, yeah, 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 yeah. since, since the beginning of time, mm -hmm. okay, man has been given his commandments, his word, yeah. been given to us to live by. Mm -hmm. And those that had kept them, mm -hmm. they were blessed. And those who did not, they were under the curse. Mm -hmm. God brought judgment yeah. on those who disobeyed. You, you, you see, we feel like, y'all get what you get to, we feel like that we can get away with a lot of stuff because there's no immediate judgment. You know, if, if, if we knew that if I did something, the judgment of God was coming right then, look, y'all, we straightened up. We straightened up. But but we, 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 we think that, we think that God doesn't notice, or we think that I can get back from this. First Samuel chapter 15, first Samuel chapter 15, uh, verses 22 to 29, it talks about Saul and uh, Samuel. Saul was the first king of Israel, okay? And Samuel was the prophet of Israel, and Samuel was given a word to tell the king. Okay, and Saul started out, Saul, you know, he's king. He, the, the children of Israel kept asking, saying, we want a king. We want to be like all other nations. Give us a king. So God said, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you something. Give you a king. Gave him a king. And then listen, listen, now he, he was a head and shoulders taller than everybody. He honored God and everything. But soon down the road, he fell off. Okay, his selfish behavior got in the way. So when you pick it up in that 22nd verse of 1 Samuel 15, listen to what it says. And Samuel said, has the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices and in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of the ram. Let me pause right there. Because some folks think that it's okay. I'm good as long as I'm going to church. I'm good as long as I'm giving an offer. I'm good as long as I'm paying tithes. I'm good as long as I'm singing on the praise team. Or I'm good as, as long as I'm a musician. You know, I'm, whatever it is, we think that that's okay. But if we're not in obedience, in alignment with the word of God, then God says, God says, listen, that doesn't work for him. So again, I ask the question, what does God have? against you. Pick it up in the 23rd verse. He, 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 he said, For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected thee from being king. God wanted to place a king that would be obedient to him 
that would lead the people of God into righteousness. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yet when his selfish behavior took over, yeah. and you, you see, so many times, so many times, we, we fail to realize that, uh, that the influence that we may have on others, somebody is watching you. Y'all hear me? Amen. Somebody is watching you. When you make that declaration that says, I'm saved and I'm honoring God with my life, you have an influence over somebody, and somebody is checking you out. And you may not never know it until. Until you see it, and they say, I thought you were. Oh, come on, go with me. I thought, I thought you were. I, I thought you said that you were. Well, listen, 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 listen to it. Let me, you know, because there, there are those who say they have or that have the form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Let me finish this out. Okay, verse twenty-three for the rebellion, for the for rebellion is the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and adultery. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Now listen to the 24th verse. And Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandments of the Lord and thy God because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Look, 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 look. You gotta get it. You gotta get it. Look, look. He's the king. He's the king. He's the man in charge. But listen to what he said. He feared the people and obeyed their voice. I can, I can give you some real simple examples. You know that, you know that, li li listen, there have been situations in our lives where we may have been called on to tell the truth, mm -hmm. but we compromise. Mm -hmm. We compromise with the enemy without even thinking about it. Henri, on the job, tell it for you, tell him I'm not here. <laughs> come on, come on. Tell them I'm not here. Just that quick. Just that just that quick. Okay? We 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 get in. But listen, listen, listen. He said he feared the people and obeyed their voice versus fearing God and obeying God. He feared the people. Okay? And because he feared the people, he lost out in his relationship with God. So now, therefore, uh, Saul says, I pray thee, pardon my sins and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto the Lord, I will not return with thee. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, the Lord has rejected thee from being king over Israel. Let me ask you a question. What does God have against you? Have you been an obedient to God in every area of your life? Take time to think about it. Have you, have you followed the ordinances and the oracles and the word of God? Have, have you heard God's voice and said, yes, Lord, I'll obey? Or have you found ways to reject what God is saying? So again, I ask the question, what does God have against you? Okay, listen, 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 listen. We don't realize, we don't realize that, uh, that the disobedience of one can be a major impact on the body of Christ. Oh, dear God. All right. Wow. You gotta hear me? Yeah. You gotta hear me, you gotta hear what I'm saying. Because all of us are representatives of holiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of us are representatives of the kingdom of God. Yeah. And when we fall in disobedience to God, it can have a major impact on the body of Christ because somebody else is observing. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Let me give you an example. In, 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 the, in the book of Joshua, I believe it is. Joshua chapter, Joshua chapter 7. In Joshua chapter 7, I... And so many people have 
didn't really look at this verse closely. So I, I, I want you to hear what it said. Okay? Chapter 7 of Joshua, verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Cameron, the son of Zaphi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Now, you read that and you said, okay. But listen, if you go back to the sixth chapter, I believe it is. You go back, turn back a couple pages and pick it up in the 19th verse. When the children of Israel marched around Jericho and Jericho was conquered. God told him, listen, listen, go in and take nothing. Yeah, take nothing. All the silver, gold, and the iron, and the brass, bring it into the house of the Lord that it may be consecrated unto the Lord. Okay? And if it's not consecrated unto the Lord, then it's a curse. But then, listen, listen, catch it. But then now here, Achan. You know, like I said last week, y'all. Sometimes when I'm studying the word, then I, I think about us. Yeah. And I'm talking about the people in general. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. That, that, ooh, this little gold cup, ain't nobody going to miss it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. This little ring that I found in the dirt, ain't nobody going to see it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. He he took it, the Achan took it and hid it in his tent. Yeah. Covered it up that nobody, nobody knew about it. But God said, God said, don't take nothing. He said, don't take anything because all the spoils that we bring back is going to be consecrated unto the Lord. It's going into the Lord's treasure, to the house of the Lord. Don't take anything. But now listen, listen, listen. So when they went up against, when Israel went up against Ai to destroy them, Ai began to conquer them. Huh? Ai, Ai began to conquer them and they were beginning to fear and run from a small group of men. When they took, Israel took 3,000 uh, yeah. and said, oh yeah, this ain't, this ain't nothing, piece of cake, we got this. Mm. Okay. But then they feared mm -hmm. because sin was in the camp. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we can't get, we cannot receive the blessings from the Lord. We can't receive the gifts that God has for us because there's sin in the camp. In the camp right? And we have, we have to get the sin out of the camp. Yeah, yeah. We got to get sin out of the camp, y'all. Yeah. Look, 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 look. So Joshua then, Joshua then, you know, take off his coat and lay before the Lord. Oh, what's wrong? You brought us out of, out of uh, Egypt and now we are under the hand of, 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 of this nation. What's going on? What's going on? God told him, get up off. Get up off your knees. Search the camp. Search the camp. Now, 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 catch this. The sin of one man. Look, come on. The sin of one man. Listen, listen again. But the children of Israel. Look, he didn't say Achan. He said the children of Israel committed a trespass. Glory to God. See, not all of Israel was a part of this. Only one man. But the scripture says the children of Israel. Look, y'all, look, look, look. Sin, sin flows. I want y'all to hear me. Okay? Because once you feel like you can get away with it one time, <laughs> Proverbs 15 and 3 says this. For the eyes of the Lord is in every place. Beholding the good and the evil. Sometimes we do not notice the things that we covet or the things that we lust after until it's presented to us. It's presented to us, and when it's presented to us, then something inside of us says, What? I want this. I got to have this. Even though the word had went out, don't take of this accursed thing. God tells us as children, you know, see the Bible gives us a, as an example and it teaches us to come now, let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And the following verse says, 
uh, uh, it says this, if you be willing and obedient, yeah. you shall eat the yeah. good of the land. You shall be prosperous or you shall be blessed. If you be willing and obedient, you see, obedience is the foundation, the, the, the foundation for our establishment, yeah. for our relationship with God. Right. We got to stand in obedience to God's word. Yeah. Okay? Right. And God said, my word is not grievous. Mm -hmm. It's not nothing that you can't do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Because he equipped us and put everything in us that pertains to life and God in it yeah. through his word. That's so right. if we study right. his word, uh -huh. okay, and follow in obedience to his word, then victory is all, yeah. all, all the time. Right. And we become That's more right. than conquerors right. through yeah. Jesus Christ yeah. who loved us. That's I believe it is. I'm, I'm almost through, y'all. Okay, I'm, I'm, I said almost. Okay. <laughs> Listen, in, 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 in Mark, in Mark chapter ten, see, we can't, we can't be like, we can't be like uh, the rich young ruler. Uh, the rich young ruler, you know, he went to Jesus and said, "Good master, what must I do to have eternal life?" And Jesus quoted the commandments unto him, and he said, "All these things I kept." from my youth up. Uh -huh. and Jesus said unto him, one thing that thou lackest, yes. go and sell that you have, uh -huh. give to the poor and come and follow me. Uh -huh. And the scripture says that this young man yeah. went away sorrowfully yeah. because he didn't want to let go yeah. of his riches. Yeah. He didn't want to let go of uh -huh. his possession. Yeah. He didn't want to let go of yeah. all the pride and, uh -huh. and the attitude. He didn't want to give uh -huh. up and surrender and uh -huh. submit to the will and the promises and the purpose of God. But listen, so let me ask you, what one thing is holding you back? What one thing? Examine yourself. What, what is the one thing that's holding that's holding me back from my relationship with God? What is the question I ask? Does God have against you? What is that? What, 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 what? We got to examine ourselves. Take inventory. And say, what is that? What is, what is this? That? Something going on in the recesses of my mind. There's something settled deep in my heart, in my spirit, that, that there may be something that, that's, that I, I, can't, I can't get a prayer through. Something in my life that everything seems like it's going wrong. But yet God is asking the question. God is asking the question to all of us. And we have to learn, God. To submit to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, as, as, as I close, yeah. as I close, oh, oh. listen, in the book of Revelations, mm -hmm. chapter 2, oh, my. Oh. chapter 2, mm -hmm. John on the Isle of Patmos get a vision from God and said, write these things mm -hmm. that are faithful and true. Mm -hmm. And he wrote to the seven churches in Asia Minor. Yeah. And he said, listen, listen, he said to the church of Ephesus, he said, listen to the church of Ephesus, you've done good. You've had patience and, and, and you know, you, you honored me in everything. But he said, listen, I got one thing against you. I got one thing against you. Listen, you left your first love. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Help me, God. You left your first love. Some of us, some of us, you, in the course of our business, in the course of our days and, and our activities and our comings and going, upset and downsetting, whatever it is, whatever it is, we got too busy for God. We got too busy for God. God said, it's one thing, one thing, you left your first love. Your first love. See, our first love, y'all, our first love is generated toward God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, all thy mind, and all thy strength. Thou shalt have another God before me. Listen, God, 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 God said, commit to him first. Commit to him first. So he said, listen, listen, to get back in alignment, listen to what he said. He said, repent and do your first work over again. Start over in that relationship with him. Repent and do your first work. See, I want you to think about what's going on in your life, the things, the activities that's going on in your life, and say, did I, 
Did I forget about God? Did I consult God in all my ways? Am, am I really honoring God? Or am I so committed into this thing that God, I'll catch up with you later? God said, not so. Because I said early on, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Amen. I want to leave that with you today. What does God have against you? Okay. What did God got? God just had God got. Search your heart. Search your heart. God, God. Is there anything in my life? It's not pleasing to you, Lord. Take it out. Take it out, Lord. Y'all stand. 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 Lord, is there anything in my life? Reveal it to me, Lord. And I ask your forgiveness right now. So, Lord, wipe this slate clean. I repent, Lord. And I come to you just as I am. God, not my will, but your will. Let it be done. Glory to God. Bow your heads, y'all. Bow your heads. I really wanted you to think about this today. And when you go back and read through the book of Revelation, you'll find that in, any, in all the seven churches, God said, I have something against you. Now you are the church of God. What does God have against you? Lord, here we are. Thank you, Lord, for your abiding presence that's in our lives right now. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your goodness, Lord that's been manifested in us, Lord. So we bow in humility before you, asking you, Lord, to forgive us for taking hold of that accursed thing. Forgive us, Lord, for uh, placing you to the side. Forgive us, Lord, for our high-mindedness. Forgive us, Lord, for the pride and the arrogance that we walk in. Forgive us, Lord, for our selfish behavior. Forgive us, Lord, for the thoughts that I think that's not of righteousness. Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us. Cleanse us, Lord. For we repent and do our first work over again. So, Lord, here we are. Wash us, and we shall be clean. We honor you, Lord, with our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. So we can truthfully say that you are our Savior. That we, we can truthfully say that you are our Redeemer. We can truthfully say that you are our King. We can truthfully say that you are our Healer. We can truthfully say that you are our deliverer. We can truthfully say that you are our way maker. God, you've done it for us. And we thank you. We thank you, Lord. It's not by our own hand, but it's by your hand. You got it all. It's by your hand. Lord, you work miracles. It's by your hand. You strengthen us. It's by your hand you healed us. It's by your hand. You encourage us. It's by your hand, Lord. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed, Lord. And we cannot, we cannot, y'all. We cannot, as the body of Christ, forget it. We must be mindful 24 7 of the grace and the mercy of God. So God, if you have anything against us, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Yeah. Forgive us, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. And let our hearts be pure. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. 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 Thank you,
If you register with this word, raise your hand. If you register with this word, you know God. You know, you know, you know. Listen, you register with that word. God, do it now. In the name of Jesus. Just that one thing. We abandon. We forsake it. We cast that off right now. In the name of Jesus. That we yield before you. We yield before you, Lord. Because we heard your word. And we walk in the truth of your word. In Jesus' name. Render the praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. 